Hi, everybody. I'm back again in part of my series. And this time I'm going to introduce my husband and, well, Molly here that uh, doesn't want to get off my lap. She's fine, though. She's our youngest pup. She's our German Shepherd. She'll be three in November, and she's an absolute beauty if she look at the camera. Molly, can you look over here? Look over here. Look over here. Say hi. Say hi. Well, that's about as good as it's going to get. Anyway, this is my husband, Chuck. I call him Win. Now Molly's kissing Daddy, and there's Dixie behind us. And um, we're together... It'll be 14 years, right? Yes. 14 years for what? That we're together. 13 years. How the heck long are we together? We're over 13 years. Yep. And we were just married six years in April. Um, I don't know what I was going to say. Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, one of the reasons I brought him on besides introducing him, obviously, was, is, what is going on with this camera? Nothing. You see that? It's not focused, Chucky. Look at it. That's because you're too far back. When you came close, it, it, there we go. Okay, sorry about that. We're just kind of learning this camera. Okay, one of the reasons, besides introducing him, that I brought him on was because one of the fallacies, I'm going to call it, to weight loss surgery is a lot of divorce. We read that in every group we were in, well, I was in, I kept saying, oh my gosh, another one divorced, another husband left, another husband cheated, or this or that. I say if that's the case, there was already something going on long before weight loss surgery. Weight loss surgery did not cause it. What do you feel, do you feel any different towards me since weight loss surgery? No. Because I saw you, like, the day I met you. <laughs> People think I'm weird, but that's the way it is. Well, they don't understand what that means. Tell them. I never saw her heavy. I met her when she weighed 170, and that's what she's, a little couple more pounds now, more than that, but she never looked no different than me, you know, Till the pictures actually, or before and after pictures, that's when you really realize it. But I never saw that, to tell you the truth, I never did. I saw her the day I met her, till now. <laughs> and for me, losing weight didn't mean I wanted to get a better man. How do you get better than this? Seriously. I mean, well, it's true. You may not be everybody's stub muffin, but you're my stub muffin, you know? I mean, just because I lost weight doesn't mean I think I can go out there and do better. I married the, the man I loved. I didn't marry the man to go and be with every Joe Blow from Idaho just because I lost weight and I think I look better. So, when I hear these people all the time saying, oh, you know, weight loss surgery messed up my marriage. Sorry, but it didn't. Y'all messed up your marriage. Something was lacking or something before weight loss surgery ever occurred. And all weight loss surgery did was give you an excuse to, to follow through with whatever you had in your mind. That's what I got to say about that. So, that being said, I guess what we're going to do is we... I started to write some questions down that I thought maybe new pre-ops or post-ops would want to talk about um we could talk about how we met and all that stuff but i don't know if y'all would be interested in that so we'll, i'll focus this on hold on guys what's the issue settle down now lay down dixie come on lay down sorry the natives are restless um Actually, I'll also an option on this. We met. He was a friend of mine's friend, and he went and fixed her pipes got froze. And I kind of was <laughs> looking out my window, and I could see him fixing the pipes with her brother. And uh, now they're messing up the focus. Look. <laughs> That's funny. It's not you. It's them. The focus is going on them, playing on the couch. And uh, sorry, guys. I don't know. We're not. There we go. 
And uh, I had worked at the local convenience store. And a couple of days later, he came in and I said, hey, you're Chuck, ain't you? And he's like, how do you know that? Who are you? And I said, well, I'm Sarah's friend, Cheryl. And he's like, oh, okay. And we started talking. And next thing you know, we start hanging out and don't even go there. And the next thing you know, we're like best buddies doing everything together. And one day, I kind of realized I was in love with him. And the rest is history. So, um... I know what you're laughing at. Just stop it. What am I laughing at? Over the counter. Oh, no. Oh, what are you laughing at? No, not nothing. I'm just laughing. I'm just laughing. Oh, okay. But, yeah, we were best friends. We did everything together. And I, we had another good friend, Joni. I called her Joni Macabaloni. I worked with her. She was in her 70s, ain't eh? No. My... Joni, yes, she is. Was. You tell her that. <laughs> Joni's my mom's age. No, she's not. Not even close. She is. Cheryl Lynn. <laughs> I'm telling you, Joni's up there. Joni's going to smack you. <laughs> Joni ain't going to smack I'm me. I swear to God, she's going to smack well, you. Well, I think, I think, jo here's Molly. I think Joni's, uh, whatever. No matter she's how... Is she your mom's age? No, she's like in her 60s right now, Sherwin. Mm, wrong answer. Mikey, her son's 40-some. So, oh, will you watch what you're doing with her? No. Well, that's neither here nor there. She, We all used to chum together. Joni and I were second shift, so 3 to 11. So when we'd get off, we'd either run to Walmart or the truck stop, and we'd have breakfast or nachos or whatever. We always had a good time together. And on my nights off, Chucky used to work at um, a landfill. He was a night guard. And I'd go up and sit and play cards and watch movies with him. Some job he had, eh? All he had to do was sit up there and watch videos and ride around the landfill to make sure everything was okay. And he had females, that would be me, up there visiting him. And we'd play cards and stuff. But yeah, so eventually the, the best friends led to love and the love led to marriage and here we are all those years later and as you can see we're a perfect fit some days i want to look at him looking at me some days i want to hit him so hard he bounces into another zip code but nonetheless i think we're perfect of course he acts like he doesn't talk much but i'm gonna shut up now so he can say something i don't talk much yeah okay most She's times the boss he thinks so i let her <laughs> think it I wear the, the the pants. He wears the skirt. They tell him that at work all the time. I said I wear the skirt. They <laughs> tell him cute. that at work all the time. So, yeah, I ha we compiled a couple questions, and it was hard to think of things because you got to remember it's four years since, well, four and a half if you think about it because I had to wait six months to even get in for surgery. Um, so it's been a while since I had weight loss surgery. There's gutter in between us. And uh, we kind of forget, but we've been racking our, what, Molly? We've been racking our brains trying to figure out what are some questions um, some pre-ops would have from a spouse's point of view. So I'm going to ask what we've come up with and let him answer, okay? Question number one, husband. How hard were the first couple weeks for your, yeah, just do that, for your wife or your husband, if your husband has surgery, to get their food and water in. It's hard. It was hard for her anyway. You want to tell them what you did to help me? I don't remember, Sherwin. Come on. Well, I don't. Before I was even home for the hospital, what did you do? You got to remind me. You know my memory. He made me a whole bunch of jello. Oh, oh, that stuff like that. He got me all kinds of broth. He had me all prepared. He w and every time he went to the store, like he was looking on the back of packages, we never did I that. I do that today. <laughs> I know, so do I. Now it's habit ingrained in me, but that's what I'm talking about. You know, Dr. Nazardin always says, if you watch 600 pound, pound life, you need a support system. And that's true. And you need people to be focused the same as you, but, or they have to be on the same page. Now, I'm going to tell you another little story. I want you to tell them what you were eating 
the day I came home from the surgery right in front of me. Lemon meringue pie. And tell them what my lemon meringue pie was to Her me. Her favorite pie. The man sat right in front of me eating the day out of my surgery lemon meringue pie. And you know what I said to him? Wow, hon. I bet that's good. I hope you enjoy it. I said it is very. He had chips, which was my weakness. He had ice cream. He had whatever he wanted, and to this day, he still does. It's not up to him to control what I put in my mouth. It's up to me to control what but I don't ag ag antagonize. antagonize her. He always tongue twists on that. But even if you did antagonize me, I'm a 47-year-old woman. Yeah, then who would hit me? Well, I would hit you, but, but <laughs> no, seriously. I'm a 47-year-old woman. If I can't control myself... And if I didn't want to follow the rules of the surgery, I shouldn't have it. But this is just my point. You can't go and have a surgery and blame, oh, there's junk in my house or, you know, I, I work away from home all the time and I never have access to healthy foods. All that is is a network of excuses for you to condone bad behavior that you shouldn't be doing. I mean... He's eating lemon meringue pie my day coming home from the surgery, and I'm just sitting there. I didn't even drool for it. I was like, okay, whatever. So the man's having lemon meringue pie. He didn't get the surgery. I did. It wasn't up to him to not eat lemon meringue pie. And it was very hard, back to the question, for me to get... I remember sitting there crying, saying, how am I going to get all this water in? Oh, my God, I'm going to die. Because every little sip, like you take a little sip and it felt like it was up here, like you were that full. It was terrible because you're like, you feel the pressure in here when, when you're full, it's up in here that you're feeling that pressure. At least I do to this day. So that's that. Um, now that leads us to this. Does the one who had weight loss surgery expect you to not eat, bring food in after they get surgery? She didn't. A lot do. I didn't. And what I wrote after this in parentheses was, it was my choice to have weight loss surgery, not his. So, but she still yelled at me sometimes. Don't get me wrong. She did. Why? What I ate. But, but I got to admit, though, when she first got the surgery, I did not eat like I did because I, I tried to, you know, I might eat that lemon meringue pie, but I also lost 38 pounds in her first month. You know, just by... No, you lost 17 the first month. 38. I went down from 190 to 160. And I'm back up to 173. Four years, six years later. Four years later. You mean two. What do you mean two? You don't weigh 160, 176. I weigh 273. 273. You were saying one. Oh, 273. You'd be smaller than me, you goofball. Yeah. Yeah, he did. I was going to tell you about that, too. Um... Eating the way I did coming out of gastric bypass, he lost a lot of weight. I mean, he put it back on and off through the years, and now we're doing keto. I try and keep him away from bread, but every now and again he'll sneak bread in the house or I'll let him have it and I get mad at him. And uh, he, for the first time in a long time... She buy, buys me more junk food than I buy myself, though. So. That's not true. So, just let you know. I used to. I used to. I'd be somewhere and I'd see a deal on candy bars or something. I'd come home with him and he'd say, What? What? When was the last time I bought you junk? What did you just buy me the other week? Macaroni and cheese. Yeah, because it was Japolino. It don't matter. You didn't want me to have pasta and that's pasta. Yeah, because I don't eat my it was at least anymore. six months that you had pasta. I was controlling you. I don't eat spaghetti anymore. My favorite meal. I try and keep him away from it. See, he could lose some, but he doesn't look bad to me. It's not a, a appearance thing for me. It's a health thing. But believe it or not, he's not that old. He's solid. Look at the arms on the man. I mean, his forearms are the size of my thighs. His arms are humongous. Look at his compared to mine. He could pick me up with one freaking arm. Well, he has picked me up with one arm. Um, it's it's not a, a vanity thing or appearance or, oh, my husband's too heavy now that I'm thin. That's just stupid. I fell in love with him like that. I don't need him to lose weight. Um, it's a health thing because I worry, but knock on wood and praise God he hasn't dealt with any... I'm in good health, believe it or not. Just my physical appearance looks terrible. 
But other you than don't that, look terrible. Well, I mean heavy. But other than that, I don't have no blood my blood pressure is excellent every time. My cholesterol is never high. My sugar is never high. Nothing. I don't know, you know, and, and I always say to the doctors because I eat all hot stuff. You know, I eat spicy. A, I eat a lot of hot stuff. Uh, peppers, jalapeno peppers. I eat like they're candy. So, but I eat them. And I, I heard before you eat hot stuff, it helps your health. I eat a lot of hot stuff. You know, and I had a couple st stress tests where the doctors couldn't believe they couldn't get my heart rate to go up till I was on on that st for nine minutes. Usually, it takes like five. Yeah, but they almost killed him because he has asthma. So imagine what that did to him. I couldn't take a stress test. I couldn't be on a treadmill. But my like my that. my my appearance physically, you'd think I I uh, would be uh, not healthy. He only has a big belly. Everywhere else on him is solid. It's just his belly, and that's because he used to drink like a fish when he was younger. <laughs> Well, it's true. No, I didn't. Well, he wasn't an alcoholic. Don't I take that wrong. I didn't drink I was 21 years old. Well, you were younger then. You're yeah. 50 now. Yeah. Must you remind me? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean... Sometimes I get on him about food, but I've been trying to get him to go keto. And he does good, but I kind of buy... You know, you only have so much money for food. So I kind of <laughs> buy what I say he can eat. And then he's kind of stuck. Unless he sneaks stuff, which I don't know how he's doing that. He must be bribing people. <laughs> okay, another question for you. Yeah, I bet your machine. He he drives heavy equipment at work. Uh, in his machine, and I'll bop him on the bean. All right, this is a good one, too. Were you scared for me getting surgery? I was. I was scared. Because I didn't think she'd be able to handle it. But... She proved me wrong. I probably won't be the one to be able to handle it, but she proved me wrong. So how did I prove you wrong? You stuck to it. How did I stick to it? One hundred percent. It's a life changing thing, and that's what you decided to do before you even just decided to do it. It's a life changing <laughs> event. And you live with me every day. Yep. And how day. am I? You follow it to the T. You got to do. You got to do it, and even after following it to the T, you know. That doesn't say you're going to get down a goal weight or anything. Look at me heading in for a revision. And that's just the way it is. And I'm I'm all right with it. I mean, I'm not upset. I'm not scared. I'm happy about it. Um, I want to get down. I felt really big today. I felt like a bloated toad. And I do. I feel very heavy today. I told the manager at Rite Aid, Kathy, I said, Oh, my God, I feel like a whale today. God, I said, I can't stand it. She said, Yeah, and the other day... When you were in, you said you felt so slim. I said, yeah, I wasn't bloated. I don't know what's going on. Some days I feel thin, and other day, most days I feel big. So, he thinks I'm ridiculous, but... She's it, nuts. It's how I feel. What do you want me to do? She had the surgery in my eyes for health. Not, not to look like a model. Who says I'm going to look like no, a model? No, I'm just saying that, to, that you say, oh, I'm the heavy, heavy. You're not heavy. You're healthy. That's all that matters. But I can start getting health problems uh, uh, again. I'm still obese. But you, you're, you're not going to show in. You're not going to get yourself up that high. I don't care what you say. You're not. Well, you can't do it if you don't put sh junk in your mouth. That's right. You know, I don't eat anything like last night. I had the crunchies and I ate six stalks of celery. Never seen anybody gain weight or get fat from celery, have you? I mean, really. And I had pork rinds. I had hot and spicy pork rinds. They were pretty good. And I made um, sugar-free jello. Oh, show them your nice cup I got you. I bought it. She just got ordered it. Don't listen to everything <laughs> you hear. Don't make my hair come out of my ponytail, you dork. Um, What are you drinking, anyway? Orange. Diet orange. Orange tea. Diet orange tea. Yeah, so we're hoping that by putting this video up, we tried to rack our brains. We only we only have one more question we came up with. Because you got to remember, again, it's almost four years. That's a, four and a half years. That's a long time to remember the questions you had pre-surgery. Because it's no longer pre-surgery for us. It's a way of life for us. So it's kind of hard to remember. But I'll tell you, like, 
the next question was, has having weight loss surgery made you change too? How and what are your eating habits? Which we touched on that a little bit. But like one thing we did a lot was we went out to eat. And now it doesn't pay us to go eat. No, because she orders too much. <laughs> well, I don't order too much. Yes, yeah, she do. Not realizing, you know, she orders because she can't eat, but she orders it anyway. And then she forces it to me. So why should I order a meal? So we don't, we don't, you know, maybe when we have friends going to meet, that's the only time we go out to eat anymore. Right, because it's just. just it, wait, it's a waste. I order French onion soup. I eat the cheese and the broth and I slide the soup over to him. And I, I do, when we go out, I get, like if we go to Applebee's, I get nachos. But. Yeah, she eats three, four chips and she wants me to eat the whole thing. And I have a meal coming, and I, and I said, we're not doing it anymore. But now that we got the air fryer, we could bring them home, and he puts them in the air fryer, and they're wonderful. So now it's all right. Plus, we have the dogs, but we bring a lot of food. We used to bring a lot of... What is... Okay, there we go. We used to bring a lot of food home for them, like when we used to go to Bonanza. He'd get the salad bar, and then he'd order the chicken and the steak, and he... The, the one waitress knew exactly what it was for. She cut it up into six pieces because at that time we still had our oldest shepherd, Madeline. So we had this. Twelve pieces, six pieces, steak, six pieces. Right, steak. six each. So twelve, six pieces of chicken and six pieces of steak because at that time we had six. Our Madeline was still here. Um, she knew. She knew that that chicken and steak, uh, chicken Monterey and steak it was, wasn't it? Yeah, chicken on rain steak. Yep. He got it every time we went for them. Now that was pre-surgery, because I would eat yep. the buffet, yep. and I used to get a chopped steak. But we've gone to a buff a buffet maybe three times since I had surgery. What a joke! You know, I don't know about you, but I cannot, no matter how hard I try, neither can he, make a small salad. It's impossible. No, it ain't. It's not. I I I saw it done. At sailors to a, a, a lady, I said, "You know what?" I said, "I want to watch you make a small salad." I just heard you say you're gonna make a small salad. She goes, "I'm gonna make a small salad," and she did. What did you put? Two lettuce <coughs> leaves in? No, nope. the lettuce was the most, but the rest was. That's where you make your mistake. Put uh, the other stuff in. She put two, two of each in. And that's it. Two cucumbers, two pieces of cucumbers, two eggs, two uh, chickpeas, two black all. Two little garbanzo beans. Yep. And I'll tell you what, it, the salad, she said, I just, it's one meal. She goes, why put a whole bunch? And it was, it was, it would have filled me, believe it or not. And then she made a small salad. And I said, well, I'm going to try that next time. Yeah, but you and I could never make a small salad. Well, I'm going to try it. So you go to the, the Bonanza or the Hosses or the whatever. And you try your dog on this to make a small salad. Next thing you know, you have this blasted mountain. And if you had gastric bypass, then you know you might get three of those bites down your face. And then you're sitting there going, oh my God, I can't take another bite. Well, then you're shoving it across the table to your husband who has his own mountain of salad sitting over there. And sometimes a meal coming and a cup of soup and God knows what else. So, honestly, it's pointless for us to go out to eat. Plus... Plus, going out to eat is expensive. You don't know what they're putting in the food. And you gain a lot of weight when you go out to eat. Believe me. Going out to eat is your enemy. Believe you me. Believe you me. Yeah, I know. That's where I gained my weight. Yeah, he went out to eat a lot. He used to be a professional bowler. I wasn't a professional bowler. Close enough. No, I wasn't. Not he even. was a big bowler. He was Mr. 300. I, I might have been a big bowler, but I wasn't a, you know, there's a lot better people out there than me. He's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> it's true. Well, you are. Our local town Hall of Fame. So what? You're still in the Hall of Fame. I was never in the Hall of Fame for nothing. That's why you call me win. I'm a winner. <laughs> That's why you that got ain't me. why. That ain't why. <laughs> and you know it. Uh, Crazy man. So, that's all we could come up with because it's been so long, but we want to invite you to please ask us questions because that, that way would be better. Ask us questions, pre-op, post-op, you know, I'm sure you all have questions and 
we're here to tell you that, you know, they say your teeth fall out. These are mine. Um, I don't have any more cavities than when I did prior. I had a cavity pre-surgery, and I just went to the dentist, what, six, seven months ago? So it was a long time afterward because we just didn't have the money. It seems like our dogs always need something at the vets, and our priorities are them. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. And um, I knew my teeth weren't rotting out of my face. I knew I could wait, but I my cavity started bothering me, and I said, it's time I go. That was the only cavity I had. So I didn't gain cavities or any decay or any kind or any... So he said, my teeth, my enamel, everything is beautiful. Dennis was well pleased with me. So if you take your supplements, you keep your teeth. And if you keep your head on straight and don't let it go to your head that you lost weight and you might look like, I don't know pretty damn good after being obese and whatever and you remember you're not so great you're still the same person and don't think you're better than your spouse maybe you'll still have a marriage intact I don't know I think you better look at yourself can't blame bariatric surgery for a failed marriage I'm sorry you see it all the time and it's nonsense it's absolute nonsense so but again we want to invite you to absolutely comment ask questions Sorry about the, the, I must, I should, probably should have put it on wide focus. Next time we come on, I'll do that. There we go. I don't know what the gig is. Well, it's trying to find something handsome and it's seeing you, you know, and it's blurring. <laughs> Those are grounds for divorce. See? <laughs> Just, <yeah. laughs> ah, it's funny. So... Anything else you want to say, Winifred? No. Don't pinch me. Are you sad I had surgery? No. How was I before surgery? I'm not talking to parents. Miserable. Why? Because you, you dwelled on it, that's why. And then it got to you and you just weren't happy with the way you looked. What, what you couldn't do nothing. The pain? I was saying last night about the pain and having to ride a scooter and stuff in Walmart and how my legs and feet would swell after five minutes, but then it was all kidney stones, which was crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Still crazy. Yeah, it was. And I never finished saying last night that um the kidney stones, how gastric bypass helped that was what they said. In all those four years, they never could figure it out. What happened was blowing me up with all that air and going in there and doing their work jostled the kidney stones loose and they came through they were hidden all that time they were just up in there and just don't know well i thought you were going to say something no i just don't know because because you had them and they because you had just you had a lot of them not just... thousands yep that was a nightmare and i don't think i ever finished saying last night how gastric bypass saved me by finding those kidney stones because everybody said, how can you wake up from gastric bypass and go, oh my God, my back pain's gone after over four years. Well, I don't know. I didn't know gastric bypass cured back pain, but I'll tell you what it did. <laughs> I had zero back pain. It was like, what just happened? Uh, we were confused about that. I was confused about it. Why, you know, you know, you, you, you ain't losing no weight yet. Weight loss would have helped your back. Right. You didn't lose no weight loss. You came right out of the hospital and you didn't have no pain in your back. And I was like, well, yeah, there's something wrong there. That's not, you know. But, and then a month, two months later, we found out why. Yeah, I said it was December 5th or 7th. 6th or 7th, I mean, I was in the hospital mm -hmm. and getting yeah, with the Yeah, two months, I think it was two months. Yeah, and then I was telling them about the bile duct clogged. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't continue with the other part. That'll be another day. Yeah. Has to do with my gallbladder, but we're not going to give that away yet. We'll save that for another <laughs> video. I had some serious complications that had nothing to do, nothing to do with gastric bypass. Like I said, I was very lucky. Gastric bypass was a blessing. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. Oh, haha. Uh -huh. I'm about to do it again. <laughs> it's just a little bit different. It's not really called gastric bypass. So, for the third time, fourth time, fifth time, oh, I saw the Grand Canyon. We're going to, it's 8.22, we got to feed the kids, it's a little late, we usually feed them 
Oh, because I fed him late. That's right. You fed him at 5 o'clock. Oh, that's right. I had a, an appointment today. I didn't get home till after 4 o'clock. So they didn't eat till 5. We're not going to feed them tonight. I'll just get up early tomorrow and feed them. We'll give them some <laughs> snacks tonight for bed. Because they just, they, they don't. time for me. I can't even stay late. Yeah. He worked a long, what, 12-hour day again today? Not today. Or 10. Mm. So, we're going to go. And please, by all means, ask away. We, we, we've been there, done that. We're about to do it again. And I don't only live gastric bypass. He could tell you a lot about gastric bypass. I mean, between me, well, you can, between my years of research and talking to you, the questions we asked the surgeon and now living with it for the last four and a half, well, almost four years, well, four and a half, again, six months before I got surgery. And I'm almost four years out. That's where we're getting four and a half. Because from the jump, you have those questions that you're asking. So, hopefully something we said helped people. But it's it's a lot easier if we're being asked questions. Because we're just trying to pull stuff out of the sky. But I thought that the divorce after bypass or weight loss surgery was crucial. Because ain't that's all we saw everywhere. Another divorce, another breakup, another, and I'm like, oh my God, what is wrong with these people? It had nothing to do with the weight loss. Check yourself, you know. What? I don't have any intention of going to any other man. I don't care if I look like Cindy Crawford. What? That's still who I want to be married to and wake up to every day. Some days, some days I want to choke them and throw them to the freaking gypsies. But for the most part, I'll keep them. All right, guys, you have a good night, and I hope you gain some information out of this video. And we look forward to any questions we can answer, and hopefully we made you laugh a little bit. This wasn't rehearsed. This is just us. This is our life and how... Twist it... my arm and do this, just so you know. Because I don't like being on video cameras or whatever, so... But she, ain't he great, honey? He's so cute. She twists it my arm. He's so cute. Huh. The kids were pretty good. I'm surprised. But yeah, this is our life. Sometimes the kids are sleeping, but they're a little rowdy tonight. Probably because we're yammering away. Sitting here like this and they're not used to it. <laughs> but for now, we're going to go. We're going to give our babies a little bit of attention and some B-O-N-E-S. They can't spell it yet, but if I say the word, they're all going to be jumping at us. <laughs> so y'all have a good night. This is Cheryl and Chuck Bolts signing out for the night. Looking forward to any and all questions you have regarding gastric bypass, marriage and divorce after gastric bypass, pre-op, post-op, and any other thing your little heart desires. Have a good night, everybody. Talk to you soon. Say night, babe. Good night. <laughs>